my friends. So this is the first time that I'm going to be coming to this house since we've closed on it. My husband has been a couple of times to do some things that we needed to finish up, like getting all the grout sealed and having the TVs hung and things like that. But this is the very first time that I've been here and I am so excited to share it with you. So here we have my husband's office. And then the dining room. Super exciting. I love the light fixtures. I'm so proud of them. And we have a pass through with my fancy pants <laughs> wine cooler. Very excited for that. And this is the kitchen. So happy with how it turned out. Look at those light fixtures. Oh, I love them so much. Very, very happy with how this came out. And then that's where our little dining table can go. And then this is our living room. Got some built-in shelves and a little fireplace there. And then our room is down here on the main floor. Just a standard bedroom, but the bathroom bathroom is super exciting. We have the tub, very important. Love the tub, but the thing that we are both incredibly excited about is the shower. The shower is so stinking beautiful. We've got two shower heads. We've got the rain shower head and then the regular one. It's so big. It's so big. I'm so, so excited about the shower. Then we have the poop closet, which nobody cares about. We have me. Got the two sinks. Love it. And then we have closet. Not too bad, not too bad. And then we can go upstairs. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> the first room to the left is kind of an extra room. We're gonna be using it as a guest room for right now. But I think eventually I don't know, we'll do something for the kids in here, I guess. And then it has a Jack and Jill style bathroom. I love Jack and Jill's. There are two of them in this house and I love them. Closet for my son. Bathtub shower combo. And then this is my son's room. We haven't painted or anything yet in here. He chose orange. So it's gonna be interesting. Just a regular room. Then you come out into the hall. And this big old room right here, which is honestly, basically the biggest room in the house, is going to be the kids' playroom. It's where all their toys are gonna to live so that hopefully I can have a clean house at some point. Then in through here is the bedroom that the girls are gonna have. I think we're gonna paint it yellow. I feel like that's so happy. Such a good color for girls. We have their closet. Huge, right? Linen closet. Then their bathroom set up, which for them I feel like is so important as they get older. We've got the double sinks here. More importantly, closed off shower and toilet area. I think when they get older, that will be a lifesaver. 
And then we have this room right here is for the moment, I think, going to be where I'm gonna set up my office. It won't stay like that forever because when the girls get older and they don't wanna share a room together, this will become one of the girls' rooms, but for right now, I think so. This is overlooking the front door. Again, I love the light fixtures, so good. But yeah. So, that is the new house. Welcome, I'm so happy that you are here. Hello everyone, oh my gosh, it has been so, so long since I have seen and chatted with you guys and there's been a lot, a lot going on. So, I'm gonna do my makeup, I'm gonna talk about everything that uh, we've experienced up until this point. I'm probably not gonna talk too much about what I'm using other than the fact that I am using the MAC Stranger Things eyeshadow palette. This was gifted to me and I'm very excited to be playing with it. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna talk about where I've been and what's been going on. So I opened this video with kind of a, a catch up. So if you haven't been following my Bits and Pieces project pan, then you may not know that in September of 2020, my husband and I began the process of having a new home built we were ready to kind of move out of the house that we had been in because we wanted to get into a better school district. Uh, we have a four-year-old that's gonna be starting school, not this year, 2022. Wow, we started this process in September of 2021. Goodness gracious. Um, so our four-year-old, he's not gonna be starting school in the fall of 2022. He'll be starting school in the fall of 2023. So we thought, you know what? Let's go ahead, let's try to move that way everybody can get in, get settled, you know, get in their footing, and then hopefully our son can start meeting and going to school with people that are gonna be in kindergarten with him. Because where he is right now, even though we absolutely love the daycare, um, it he would not have been going to school with any of those kids because it was in a different school zone. Sadly, we're not in that school zone, but, you know, we did what we could. We found a really, really great neighborhood that we liked in an area that we liked in a school district that we liked. So in September of 2021, we started this whole process. And in my Bits and Pieces project pan, I've been kind of taking you along on some of the pictures that we've taken throughout the course of the build, and it's been really good. Um, now I will say, because <laughs> it's about to not be really good, um, that everyone that we've worked with so far on the home builder side has been absolutely, absolutely helpful and lovely and wonderful and we don't have necessarily any negative feelings about that aspect. But things have gone a little awry. <laughs> um, so, we sold the house that we were in at the time and we did that back in April. Part of our contract that we had gone into when we sold that house was that we needed a 45 day seller possession because at that point in time, we didn't know when this house was going to be completed and we wanted to make sure that we gave ourselves some good lead time. So on June the 6th, we did our actual move. So that was a Monday and we had the moving company that we had hired, they came out, they got about 85% of our stuff. Um, it was not fully ready. I hadn't gotten everything quite packed yet. It's kind of hard when you're moving to decide what you need and what you don't need and especially when you've got kids. So I was a little behind which let's be honest, you guys probably saw that coming anyway. Um, but yeah, they got about 85% of our stuff, got it out of our old house and moved it here to the new house. And that went that went mostly well. The, the company that we used, everyone who worked on that move was really very nice and we felt good about them. Unfortunately, they broke my desk, which makes me so sad because I really, really loved that desk. 
Um, so we're working with them as far as getting um, replacement value for it. The insurance that comes with the move, we didn't buy extra insurance, but the insurance that comes with the move is like 60 cents on the dollar or something. And I got it a few years ago off of Wayfair, so I don't have high hopes here. So I have purchased a new desk, and to be honest, I wish that I had filmed myself putting it together because it was rather comical. It is an Ikea desk, and uh, I, uh, yeah. I wish I'd filmed it. <laughs> um, so that was kind of a bummer, but all in all, it was it was not a, a bad experience by any means. So that was Monday. We get everything set up. We're pretty much moved in. Go to bed that night. Wake up the next morning. My husband wakes up at his usual time around like 6.30 or so. And goes in to take a shower in that beautiful new shower that you saw in the first part of this video. That beautiful new shower that we were so excited about and that was honestly one of our favorite parts about this house. It's not our favorite part anymore. Um, so he went to go take a shower and couldn't get any hot water. So he ran the shower for a few minutes, couldn't get any hot water, and was like, well, that's weird. Uh, so he turned off the shower and turned on one of the bathroom sinks to see if he could get hot water there because he wasn't exactly sure what the issue was. Turned on the sink, couldn't get any, any hot water there. He was like, well, that's that's weird. So he came out of the bathroom. I was like, I can't get any hot water. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to have to to call somebody to figure out what the issue is. And I was like, all right. So I then got up and went into the bathroom to go, you know, do the morning stuff, brush teeth, put in contact lenses, all that kind of good stuff. And there was water everywhere. There was water everywhere. And it's, it was strange because there was a pool of water, like standing water in between where the shower and the little, I call it the poop closet, <laughs> but the little room where the, the toilet itself is, it was it was standing water and there was water in that room where the toilet was and it was localized. And it, it was very strange because there's a good heavy lip in between the shower and the bathroom floor and there was no water in the shower but it was all over the floor and I was like, oh, okay, okay, this is a problem. <laughs> so I kind of ran back out to, to get some towels and there was a good two feet, two to three feet in between where the standing water was and the threshold of the bathroom to the bedroom. Stepped out of there and the carpet was just soaked, just soaked all through the, the entryway leading into the bathroom. I was like, oh, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good. Um, so I told my husband, I was like, okay, we, we've, got, we've got a problem. We've got a problem. So he, um, on the inside of one of our cabinets in the kitchen is all of the emergency numbers. The builder that we built our house with has a one-year warranty on the house. So it was all the contact information for emergencies and stuff like that. Called that pretty much immediately. Um, and they dispatched people out to us and we, I left the house at that basically in the middle of that because I had to take our son to school, our daycare, we call it school. So he's working with them. They send a, pl and a plumber out to see if they can figure out, you know, what's going on. Plumber comes out and it turns out that whoever our builder used contractor to do the bathrooms put grout down the drains. Why? I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, put grout down the drains and that is what caused this, this issue. So when I get back from A, taking our son to school and stopping off at the old house to pick some stuff up because again, we only moved about like 85% of our stuff. Um, so I was there getting another load of just stuff that hadn't gotten into boxes and that the movers hadn't been able to get. So when I got back, he had met with our warranty 
coordinator, I think that's essentially what he's called, met with him and they had found that not only had this water traveled from the bathroom, skipped a spot, and then traveled into the bedroom, but the bathroom is right next to our closet. So it was soaked inside of the closet. The carpet was completely soaked through. And then it also shares a wall with our laundry room. So there was water in our laundry room. So that was a big surprise because <laughs> wasn't expecting that. So the warranty coordinator and my husband had spent the morning basically moving everything out of the bedroom, the bathroom, the laundry room, and the closet. And that is all in our dining room now, just waiting to be able to be put away. So he, the warranty coordinator, he um, contacted a remediation company to come out and start working on getting our floors dry because they were gonna have to then pull out all of the carpet, all of the everything. Um, so they were gonna pull out all of the carpet in the bedroom because they didn't want a weird seam. They were pulling out all of the carpet in the closet. And then on the other side of the wall, they were pulling out all of the, um, well, they found out later that they were gonna have to replace all of the flooring in the laundry room, which is a vinyl. So, they sent their, he had the remediation team come out. They set up all of their fans to start drying everything out. And they did, um, they have like, I guess, testers or readers or what have you to check and see A, how wet everything is, but also black water. Uh, if this is a term that you've never heard, consider yourself lucky. Black water is basically poop water because there was the issue in our bathroom when the plumber was here, they found that when you would flush the toilet, it would bubble up into our shower. Ew. Um, so they were testing, you know, because that's a potential mold issue. Let's be very honest. It's gross and it's a mold issue. So they tested everything. That's when they found out that they were going to have to replace all of the flooring in the laundry room as well because the, the gentleman from the remediation company he was like, yeah, I tested it in there. We're going to need to replace that too. It's like, okay. So that was also super frustrating because it meant that our washer and dryer were then pulled out into the dining room and couldn't be used. And we had just used a, a ton of our towels to clean up all of this water that was in the bathroom and laundry room and, and everything. So we had no way of, of washing or drying those. So that was less than ideal. So the remediation company started the drying process. All of this is Tuesday the 7th, mind you. Well, Tuesday the 7th is when they did everything in the bedroom and the closet. They did all the readings and found that they needed to do something in the laundry room, but it was just one person that was here that day from the remediation company and he couldn't move the washer and dryer by himself. So he was like, I'm gonna have to come back tomorrow with a coworker and then we'll move them out together and we'll get that room started as far as the, the drying process goes. So they came back on Wednesday the 8th to do that and get all that going. So we had fans going in our house for three days, four days, something like that. So that was kind of the biggest highlight from Wednesday. And then on Thursday, I don't remember what, if there was anything going on past that day because that day, one of my girls fell and I had to take her to the emergency room. So in this house, we have these beautiful, and I'll insert a picture here because I don't think you can see them behind me. Um, we have these beautiful baseboards going around all of our house that are a good five inches. And she was just running around and playing and doing the things that kids do. She tripped over her little feet and fell and just, she hit her face. Like it was so fast. Like I was sitting right there it was so fast, she fell, and the way that she hit, she um, it looked like she bit through her bottom lip. Absolutely 
terrifying. That was on Thursday. And to make matters worse, I didn't have the car. My husband had the car. And it's not that we share a car exactly. He had had to pick up a couple of things at the old house. So he had my SUV, which has the car seats in it. So I couldn't leave. I couldn't do anything. He was at a doctor's appointment. So I called him. I'm like, oh, okay, where are you? How close to the house are you? Luckily, he was only about 10 minutes away. So he, you know, got home as quickly as he could. I called the pediatrician. They kind of walked me through what to do. So I got to spend most of Thursday in the emergency room. And this is my first time having to take someone to the emergency room, one of my kids. Technically, we have taken her before, but it wasn't like an actual like emergency emergency. The pediatrician just wasn't there and couldn't see her. So they were like, well, you're going to have to take her to basically our sister branch, which was an ER in um, Uptown Charlotte. So that technically was me taking her to the emergency room, but it wasn't an emergency. So it just... It felt much different than this time when, you know, I, my child has a hole in her face. So, took her to the emergency room and um, it turns out she didn't actually bite through. What had happened is she, when she hit the wall with her face, she bit down on the inside and busted everything up there. But then also, underneath her lip is where she hit on the baseboard itself. So it was a straight cut that needed stitches there. Oh, it makes my skin crawl just talking about it because it was awful. It was so scary, it was so scary. She was much, she was, she, she dealt with it much better than I did. <laughs> I was absolutely a mess, I was absolutely a mess. Um, so I don't really remember exactly what happened then, but during this time we also had to have movers come in and basically move all of our stuff out of the bedroom, take our beds apart, take our bed apart and everything. Luckily we have um, a spare room that we're currently, well we're currently sleeping in now, but we had been using as a guest room that eventually we're going to use as something else. So. Thankfully, we have some place where we can where we could sleep, but we're in a different bed because um, of just how it all kind of played out. So that's been difficult. <laughs> as much as I hate our bed, I miss our bed because it's significantly bigger. Uh, it doesn't matter. Not a big importance. Um, so yeah, so that all got taken apart, waited for the floors to dry, had to order new flooring to come in and get replaced in the bedroom, the closet, and the laundry room. And then had to have the painters come back because they had to redo the drywall in all those areas, rip out all those baseboards and things like that to replace everything that had the poop water on it. So, that all finally got finished and completed. They got everything replaced and we were very excited. Finally got back into our room on Saturday the 18th. So this had been going on for a while. Got everything moved back into where it was supposed to go. I was super excited to be able to start, you know, doing laundry because we also have a four year old who has just had a lot of changes going on and we've had kind of some backsliding when it comes to potty training and I haven't been able to full on wash any of those clothes. I've just been basically rinsing them um, and using like some soap in the sink. So I've been cleaning them, but not like the same way that a washer and dryer does. And many of you out there are probably like, Ashley, why didn't you just go to a laundromat? I looked, there are no laundromats in this area at all. Um, and that was very frustrating because that was my first thought was, you know what, I'll just find a laundromat, we'll get it taken care of. No, nope, no. Nope. So all of those towels that we use to, to clean everything up, those all had to get thrown away because after, what, 10 days of sitting and just growing the funk, mm -mm, I am not dealing with that. So, um... Finally get into our bedroom, 
very excited, I can spread out in the bed, have a good night's sleep, wake up on Sunday morning, Father's Day, feeling good, my husband gets up, goes to take a shower, yeah, there's water everywhere. I mean, we got hot water this time, but yeah, water everywhere. Whatever the problem was, wasn't fully fixed. So now our bathroom is reflooded. Our closet is reflooded. Our laundry room is reflooded. And because it was Sunday and Father's Day, couldn't get up with really anybody from the home builder or the um, warranty side of things. And like, I'm not mad about that. You know, you, you deserve to have your day off, but it was just really stressful that of course this happened when, you know, nobody was really available. So we have been trying to kind of coordinate with some people and stuff like that. Today is the 20th and we've had the plumber come out or they got a plumber dispatched to us. Um, but the warranty office and the home builder and everybody are closed today as well because today's a federal holiday. Today is Juneteenth. So everyone has been kind of MIA. So we were able to get a plumber out here today to take a look at things and he found more grout that apparently the first plumber didn't get or didn't see or whatever. And it's, it's just, it's frustrating because, I mean, I know they had to have like run tests when the plumber was out here getting everything cleared and I don't understand, you know, why this is happening again. But it is. So he was out, the, we finally got up with our warranty rep and he sent out the remediation team again. Same, same people showed up, it was really funny um, because they were, they were so super nice. Like I said, everyone that we have dealt with in this process so far has been absolutely fantastic. So the same, the same guys from the remediation team showed up and were like, same issue, same place. And they're like, really? They're like, yep. Um, so we've got a whole new set of fans going in those rooms, trying to dry everything back out again. And I don't know, like, I don't know what is going to happen from here. Our warranty rep hasn't been out to the house yet. We're expecting that he'll probably be out tomorrow. Um, again, he's off today, so we're trying not to blow him up too much and like, <laughs> you know, like we get it, but at the same time, we need to make sure that we're getting our house taken care of because this is a brand new house. These are not the kinds of things that you expect to be happening in a brand new house. You know, it's not like we purchased a pre-owned home that's, you know, 20 years old and you expect for there to be, you know, stuff that pops up. This is a brand new build. So that has been very stressful. Luckily, before everything happened on Saturday, I was able to do two whole loads of laundry. I did all of the kids' clothes and I did all of our clothes that we had been wearing up until this point. So we have some clean clothes for my kids. Um, you know, I'm laughing because it's the only thing I can do. But that's, that is where we are at as of now. Um, like I said, hopefully we'll, we'll hear from our warranty rep, um, tomorrow and he'll come out and kind of assess things, but we're just, we're just really concerned now at this point, cause we don't want, you know, for issues to continue to happen. And the fact that, you know, there was pools of standing water and then dry places and then more water to me at least. That says that this is something that is underneath the tile in the bathroom. That there is something going on either in the foundation or something, but there is something going on underneath the floor. And I appreciate that they had gone in and replaced all of our carpeting and the vinyl in the laundry room. But personally, and we'll see how this ends up turning out. I'm not a plumber or anything like that, but I feel like they need to pull up all the tile and they need to get into 
like the ground in the bathroom because clearly there is an issue here so we're hoping that we can get them to scope all of our drains like take a little camera thing go through every drain in the house and figure out exactly what is going on where because like when the plumber came he came originally yesterday on father's day um he came and he could see that it wasn't draining out properly, I guess, to the street level. I may not be saying all this 100% correctly because either A, I wasn't there because I was um, doing something with the kids to try to <laughs> keep everybody sane. Um, so my husband did a lot of this, but also I'm not a plumber, so I may not say everything perfectly, but uh, essentially it wasn't draining properly to the street and they could see where the hang up was because literally when my husband took his shower yesterday, there was poop water coming up everywhere. There was poop water coming up in the bathtub. There was poop water coming up in the shower. Like there was poop water flowing out of our drains while he tried to take a shower. So when the plumber came out yesterday, he said not, he looked at some of the drain, the, he could see where it was draining somewhere. I don't know, none of this makes sense, I'm sure. Um, but he did say that we couldn't use anything. So there was only two toilets that we could use. There was one shower that we could use and that was it. So I couldn't run the dishwasher and you know, just all this stuff. So that's been super, super frustrating. Um, but kind of lost my train of thought where I was going with that. It's been a lot. It's been a lot. I think that's kind of where where I'm at right now. And I don't really know where next steps are exactly. I just know that this should not be happening in a brand new house. And I'm very concerned about the fact that there has been fecal matter <laughs> underneath the tile. Or maybe underneath the tile. Because the theory was that the water... Um, I don't even know. But... The fact that there was water that didn't come from an overflow source. I think that's the biggest thing that I'm trying to say is that no water at any point in either of these instances overflowed from anywhere. So it's not like the shower got backed up and then flowed over the ledge or anything like that. It isn't like the toilet got backed up and flew and, and overflowed out of the, none of that happened. It was all coming up from somewhere and I just I don't want to deal with having issues later on down the line like again I'm really glad that they um you know replaced all of the carpeting um which they're doing again and and all of that but I'm just I'm nervous that there's something underneath that tile that could pose a problem later and that warranty while I'm incredibly grateful to have it obviously it's only a year and these are the types of problems, especially when it comes to things like mold, that, you know, they don't pop up overnight typically. Like that's something that, you know, you start having health concerns later on down the line and then you find out, oh, hey, your bathroom is, you know, a biological hazard or something, you know? And that's especially, you know, aside from the fact that me and my husband are here, we have small, small children. And I just, I don't know, it's been, really very frustrating and I'm trying really hard to maintain you know positivity and you know not flip out although yeah, it's caused a lot of strain in my husband and I's relationship because we're both so stressed out by it um but the, these are things that you just don't want to mess around with and you don't want to find out later that something was an issue especially if it turns into something that you then have to pay for when it wasn't your all right, so even though I haven't worn makeup in a month and I haven't filmed any YouTube videos in a month, somehow while I was rambling about my fear of mold, my memory card filled up. So I just went ahead and finished off the rest of my eye makeup as well as adding a little bit of lipstick. And I think it looks all right. I think I'm definitely out of practice when it comes to my makeup and everything. But 
I really did just want to jump on here, let you guys know what was going on, where I was. I am going to be coming back. Um, it's going to be a lackluster return though because I haven't worn makeup in a month so I'm super behind on all of my projects. I am way behind on all of my updates. So I'm going to be getting back into the swing of things. It's probably just going to take me a minute and um, I miss you guys. I miss you guys a ton. So. Hang in there with me. I love you guys so, so much. Uh, everything that I used, I will go ahead and link in the description box below in case anybody is curious. Also, in the comments, let me know if you've dealt with any sort of plumbing issues like this and if there's anything that I should be aware of, anything that I should be asking or, or anything like that. I would love to get your perspective on it as well. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope that you're having an amazing day and I'll see you next time. Bye.